One of my favourite spices is cinnamon. It's got that wonderful warm, earthy, just fabulous flavour that's great in savoury dishes, it adds that earthy hotness to it, but in sweets and puddings it really comes to life. It adds that beautiful extra almost quintessentially pudding flavour to pretty much anything you add it to. And today I'm making it the star event. I'm making these beautiful cinnamon slice on the One Pot Chef. First things first, let's get started with our dry ingredients. Into a mixing bowl I've got two cups of plain all-purpose flour and to that I'm going to add in one teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda or baking soda, and of course our cinnamon. I'm putting in two teaspoons of cinnamon today, which doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind that cinnamon is quite a strong spice and you want to just have a little bit in there, you get the flavour without it being too overwhelming. So all we need to do is just with a wooden spoon we're just going to mix that all together until it's combined. That's looking good and we're just going to set this aside while we work on our wet ingredients. Over on the stove I've got a small saucepan over medium heat and I've got 160 grams of butter. I'm using regular butter today. Normally I'd use unsalted butter in a dessert or a sweet type of dish, but I want a little bit of salt in there just to offset the sweetness. And the sweetness is coming from this. Two cups of firmly packed brown sugar. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. It looks like heaps more, but it's only because it's a very small pan. I just didn't want to use a huge pan for this. And all we're going to do is we're going to allow this to slowly melt over the heat. This will take a few minutes, but you don't want to do this too fast. You just want this to go nice and slow. Let them melt together. It's important to remember when working with sugar on the stove that you be very gentle. Don't splash it about or anything because sugar becomes superheated, way hotter than, say, boiling water or anything like that. And if you accidentally splash yourself with it, you'll give yourself a nasty burn. So just be nice and slow, very gentle. Take your time. It'll get there eventually. There we go. That's all melted and smoothly mixed together. So we're just going to take this off the heat and we're going to allow this to cool for about five minutes on the side. Once the mixture is cooled for a few minutes, we're going to add in our vanilla extract. I'm putting in two teaspoons. And I'm also adding in two eggs. Now we're just going to mix those in nice and quickly, although gently so you're not splashing yourself. We just want to get those eggs incorporated in there before they turn into scrambled eggs, which caramel flavoured scrambled eggs doesn't really work. <laughs> I could almost dive into this right now, but I shall restrain myself. I better get the dry ingredients ready. <laughs> so we've got our dry ingredients there and I've made a little well in the centre and we're just going to pour this mixture in. And we're just going to mix that until it's completely combined. And what we end up with is this ultra thick batter. It's sort of like a brownie batter because really these are being made similar to brownies. Now all we need to do is transfer this into our baking tin. I've got a large slice pan here which I've just lightly greased and lined with some non-stick baking paper and I'm just going to pour our batter in. And just carefully smooth it out so it covers the whole surface. And this is ready to go into the oven. Preheated oven, 180 degrees Celsius, about 360 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes or until a skewer inserted into the slice comes out clean. While our cinnamon slice is in the oven, I thought I'd just take this opportunity to remind you to check out my social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Links in the video description underneath this video on YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it. That way you won't miss out on any of my new videos. Our slice is out of the oven and we're just going to leave this in the pan for about 5 to 10 minutes to cool and then we're going to start topping it. While the slice is still warm, I want to give it a nice sweet cinnamon topping. So what I've got is I took a little bit of butter and I've just melted it 
and I'm going to brush it all over the surface. Be nice and generous with this because we want to get it nice and moist. It'll soak in to the top layer of the slice. And we're just going to top this with some cinnamon sugar, which I've just made with a quarter of a cup of caster sugar or super fine white sugar, which I've just mixed in a teaspoon of cinnamon. And we're just going to sprinkle that all over the surface. And we're just going to allow this to cool completely before we slice it up. And here we have our completed cinnamon slice looking absolutely gorgeous. You can see it's a lovely and cakey on the inside and it's got that wonderful moist almost glazed surface with the butter and the cinnamon sugar it's absolutely delicious i can't wait to dive in and have a taste these are absolutely gorgeous oh i'm gonna be very very good and just have a tiny tiny eatsy piece mm. Oh, it's so sugary and cinnamony. Yum. <laughs> the slice itself is nice and cakey and dense. It's almost like a cinnamon flavoured brownie. It's really, really tasty. And the top has got this moist, almost glaze like effect on it from the melted butter and the cinnamon sugar on top. It's not overpoweringly cinnamon, but it definitely has a cinnamon flavour. So if you love your cinnamon, you're going to love this. Well, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Check out my other videos at onepotchefshow.com. And until next time, see you later. Once they're completely cooled, you can store your cinnamon slices in an airtight container and just leave it on the counter for up to three days. If you're not planning on eating them all immediately, you can freeze them. Just simply put them into the airtight container, make sure it's completely sealed and place it in the freezer for up to a month.